Um, hello, guys. Welcome to the Performa Podcast, um, the podcast where we talk about all things pop culture, music, TV, movies, anything else that's going on in the world pop culture wise. Um, I'm your host, Peter Sears. And uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, one of the, again, one of the people that when we sat down, so we, we have to have these people on the show. This is one of the guys. He is a, a, a serial entrepreneur. He, he has multiple businesses. Number one, um, he's the co-founder of the company that I work for, I guess, Performa, which is the company that I fell in love with. I fell in love with Performa. Uh, I, I, discovered, I discovered you guys about five years ago. And you guys are probably been around a little bit longer than that, but not too much, right? Not too much. No, no. Yeah. It's been about it's been about 10 years, but but really in the last five years have things only really started kind of taking okay. off. And that's that's kind of how how businesses work, right? You gotta like, if you really want to do it, you gotta be in it for the long haul, like hopefully. Um, and then he's also uh, uh, CEO of the company Vitamart, um, which is a, an online uh, website for you know supplements, vitamins, all your uh, fitness supplement needs. Um, and that website is vitamart.ca correct? Yes. Um, and then also um, he is, has a new supplement line called Best Vitamin. That's correct. Sure. Brand new. M Mark Mark is just, uh, wait, I didn't even say your name yet. Oh, darn it. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me say the name and then we'll go the rest of the credits. Uh, Mark Holloway, Chuck. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Performer Podcast. <laughs> oh, so happy to be here. Thanks so much, Peter. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's a dad. He's married. He's got three kids, which that's already three kids too many for me, Mark, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, but with all your, like, with all your businesses that you're running, like, that's, a, that's a lot. Cause you gotta be, you know, full-time, you gotta be CEO. So you're running all these companies. And then at the same time, you also have to run your household, which, um, I mean, I'm sure your wife helps you a little bit, but that's still like a lot of stuff to do. So, um, Mark, welcome gotta, to the show, sir. Yeah. I got a V I got a very amazing and supporting wife. So doesn't okay. doesn't happen without without the of course it takes a the village, wife right? leading the show in the home. Yep. <laughs> um, and then also uh, Mar Mark is starting a, a brand new company that we're not we're not we're not there yet. But maybe by the time this podcast airs, it will be because <laughs> we're we're recording yeah, so. a little bit ahead of time. Um, but it's a it's going to be a salad delivery service up in in your neck of the woods, up in in Canada. Are you going like going all of Canada or like the main cities first? Oh, uh, we want to, yeah, we'll start, uh, we'll start kind of close to my home and then uh -huh. honestly just blow it up from there. So yeah. we see it, we see it coast to coast. We need, we, uh, that's funny. I don't think of, uh, this is just me being a stupid American, but we don't think about Canada having coasts, but you guys share the same coast that we do. <laughs> <laughs> right on top. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, we don't, yeah, like we, that's, that's the, okay. I, I can say this cause I'm American, but a lot of us don't have good geographical sense <laughs> like, oh, well i think it, it's there's there's a big world out there and honestly we uh, we know where we live and i think there's, uh, uh, until you spend some time looking at a map and going back to it you really just you right. think something is here and something is there and so i get it right so because because i th this is this is me being silly too because you're, you're in toronto currently yes yep um and uh i remember you know i've been to toronto a couple times but um thinking that I was on the ocean in Toronto because <laughs> there's water there, but that's actually not true at all. It's a, it's a lake. Yes. Yeah, the great lakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's one of the funny things too, is I find <laughs> that um, I'm chatting and we, we do business in the U S and all over the world and uh, being in Toronto, it's actually quite far South. And so like you look at, you look at the border of Canada, right, U S right, right. and you look at the, look at the Northern States, they're actually, they're actually more North than us. So yeah, it's always, yeah. it's always interesting to kind of, kind of have that conversation and going, well, we're actually, we're actually further South than you are. And <laughs> so that's our fault. I apologize on behalf of all Americans. Not all of us know <laughs> where anything is. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, if, if it makes you feel any better uh, or it doesn't make you feel, it makes us feel better. But like, uh, as we spoke about before, uh, before we started recording, uh, I'm currently in Oklahoma city and there's people. So I'm in Oklahoma City, which is like probably the biggest city in Oklahoma. It's the capital of Oklahoma. Um, and my girlfriend is from a small town about an hour from here. And most people in Oklahoma City don't even know where she's from. And it's only an hour. <laughs> <laughs> like it's only an hour from here. Like you could right. you hop in a car and drive down there. So I just think that we kind of live in our own little worlds and that's it. So, you know, sure. sorry. Sorry for being American, you guys. 
<laughs> um, so, okay, so this is this is going to be a question that I have for you right off the bat is with being somebody who's, you know, in charge of so many businesses, um, how does that work, especially in a time like right now when there's just like so much, I don't know what tomorrow's bringing. Yeah, uh, well, um, all the businesses that we're in, and I guess this is this is the theme that I that I really live by. It's a health. And so, so whether yeah. it's Performa or it's Vitamart or it's Best Vitamin or Salad Nation, all of it's around health. And I think with the time right now, um, health is on everyone's mind and uh, health is just something that's really, really um, become um, forefront of everyone's kind of um, thoughts and conversations. And so being able to do it and be able to manage these businesses um, really is really is a drive towards helping people's health. And when we look at something like Performa, um, while the, while the products that were uh, the shaker cups that we have and all those things, they're not necessarily making someone lift the dumbbell or do the push up or any of those kinds of things, but it's, but it's helping someone be more active and helping someone's health. And so being able to manage everything, um, a lot of the businesses have a lot of overlap in terms of what they do and the customers they serve. And so, right. well, it seems like a huge undertaking. It really is getting a great team of people around me who also are into the health and um, following through with that vision of helping people or solving their health problems or helping them be more active or whatever that is. I like that. I, I, I can, t I can attest that I definitely like, you know, like I said, I fell in love with, you know, I think the first round, like the first round of shaker cups that you guys had, which was like, what it was, uh, the first one I ever had was the flash. Cause I love the flash, mm. like my favorite. Um, but I think at that time you guys had flash Batman, Superman and wonder woman. I think that was it. Right. It was like the first four. Uh, yes. And uh, yes, those were, those um, were the first four we had. But I just remember like feeling like, oh, that like as someone that loves to work out and whatever, I'm like, I'm like, cool now. Like I have this cool shaker cup, <laughs> right? Like it, and it, I mean, I'm not someone that needs motivation. Like I'm going to get after it no matter what, but you know, it's like, it's just like getting like a cool workout shirt or an outfit. Like you just feel like, okay, like now I have this thing. People need to see me with this thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, uh, that was the thing, like the overarching for the, for the Performa company, um, we always wanted fitness accessories, like ought to make people feel awesome. And yeah. that was just always, that was always the underlying thing is you see, you see a shaker cup, you see lifting straps, you see these things and yeah. while they might be great quality and functionally really, really well, they're not fun. Like they don't, they don't, they don't make you feel cool. They don't make you feel like, feel like a superhero or feel like right. anything. And so that was really the driving force. And Honestly, Darren and I, Darren, who also owns Performa with me, um, we're just really uh, superhero nerds and into yeah. all the kind of movies and comics and all that kind of stuff. We just thought, wouldn't it be the coolest thing to have this on there? And um, yeah, just that, just that feeling of making someone feel awesome when they're when they're being active or helping someone be more active. This is this is a fun note, and uh, this is also me being silly, but it wasn't until maybe a few months ago that I noticed that some of the shaker cups literally say you are awesome underneath the oh, lid. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've, I have what, like 30 of them or something? Like my girlfriend says I have too many and I'm like, you can never have too many. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I was like, oh, you are awesome. Yeah. And that was like a thing. Uh, now you guys have always had those underneath the, the lids. I just am silly and barely noticed it. Right. But that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of one of those Easter eggs where yeah. you, you kind of use it. And again, you, you use the product because functionally you want to mix your shake or you want water or whatever it is, right. but it's just all those extra benefits outside of even the actual artwork on it, that, that making someone feel awesome and kind of building enthusiasm for building a healthy lifestyle and just, right. just all that contributes. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. It's related kind of uh, who is your actual favorite superhero? Oh man, that's that's always so tough. It is, um, the, isn't it? When people ask, me, yeah, like, oh. uh, so used to working the trade show was back in the day and always asking everyone oh, that. And, trade shows, Mark, you're gonna I hurt know. my feelings. We're just, I know, uh, I know, it's the most fun. We were just my girlfriend and I were just talking about that because the last I and mean, the last time I saw you was the the Fit Expo. Yes, in, in yeah, LA. I was just thinking of yeah, the LA Fit Expo. And it's it it you know I, I got I I got like one of those like reminders like last year you were here kind of thing and i was like yeah. oh man that's right it was always the last weekend in january and she was like when they have it again we have to go i'm like well yeah i've been going every year since like 
oh four or oh five like yeah. i missed that mark i missed i i love the fit expo is my favorite expo period yeah. for obvious reasons but uh sorry anyway no right on <laughs> um yeah so uh, looking at superheroes uh, uh i'm not gonna name just one okay um fair. so um uh like them all for different reasons but but number one um iron man um, okay. i just love the um the gadget like innovating creating something totally totally cool and never before seen and kind of kind of creating that superhero right um tony stark is just that like quick-witted super smart guy uh and then on the other side i really like captain america that uh that that virtuous and like true and just um, does the right thing and has right. manners and respect and um, kindness and all that. And then uh, on the other end of that side, uh, I love Deadpool. Um, Deadpool okay. to me is just that, just that hilarious, like bad mouth, just the, right. like the anti-hero, but just, just that guy that just goes at it in such a, such a funny way to get the problem solved. So um, those three, those three, I love, absolutely yeah. love those characters. There's, there's a million I love. I could, of I course, could keep of kind of going. Yeah, but, of yeah. course. Okay, so here's a question. So, as because uh, I know I do this all the time too. Are are you? I know you have your your background is uh, your ethnicity is Ukrainian. So, did you move to Canada at some point early on? Both my parents did. So, okay. So my mom, yeah. So, so both my parents' families are from Ukraine. Got it. My dad was born in Canada, and my mom actually was born on the way as the family was traveling from Ukraine Ukraine to get to the coast. So, like born on, on, a, on, a, on a boat. Um, born, um, they would have they would have traveled by train and like car and all that stuff to get to the actual coast. And uh -huh. then they got to the coast. She was born, and then so she would have been a newborn on like a ship, going across the ocean. Oh my god, that's yeah. crazy. That yeah. sounds really dangerous. I couldn't imagine for her parents. <laughs> yeah, like oh my god, parents. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so well, the question the question was uh, okay. So you're so you were born in in Toronto or yep in Canada. In Canada. Okay. Yep. Uh, so like for me being someone that's born in LA, uh, you know, born and raised, I love when I see movies, um, and like, I recognize where they are. I'm like, oh, that's right down the street from someone or that, you know what I mean? So as someone who's a Deadpool fan, I know a lot of that is shot in Toronto. Like, do you watch that and be like, oh, I know where that is. I know like, or do you just get entertained and not even think about stuff like that? Well, I think it's, yeah, like so much, <laughs> of, so much of movies now, I feel like they could be shot anywhere to make it right. look like anywhere else. So even if it's shot in, um, shot in Australia, it could still be made to look like Toronto or made Correct. to look like New York or that yeah, kind of thing. True. And so, uh, so I think as a Canadian, um, what I do, what I do like maybe see more is um, who the actors in that are. So if so you look at Ryan Reynolds, right. Ryan Reynolds is a Canadian, Ryan Reynolds right. is Deadpool. And so, so I think that's something that I would see maybe a bit more than the actual kind of place. Okay. But, but yeah, it's always cool to see, like yeah. if you see some you know, landmark and um, that kind of thing. It, it, for me, it's just like, I don't know, like I feel, I mean, we all feel like we're superheroes deep down, but like, I don't know, there's, for me, there's always like a sense of pride, like where I, even like, especially if it's like a place that's like obscure that like, unless you were from there or yeah. go to like you would not know where this is and sometimes you know like they try to dress it up and i'm like no i know exactly where they're doing. yeah that's, i've that's been I, there yeah that's ivar yeah. in hollywood like that is not uh like like la la land like i'm like that's not what that bar is supposed to like that bar is uh, is part of my french but like a shithole that's not a nice little jazz yeah bar. <laughs> yeah yeah you know? yeah totally um, but um okay so here's a question too um were you someone, were you like a kid that grew up like reading comic books or did you, you okay, you did. Oh yeah. Uh, Cause I did um, loved comics. So okay. uh, I was actually looking the other day cause I was moving some stuff around. Um, I was really into Spider-Man. So Spider-Man okay. comics. So, so I own lots of different comics and um, typically, typically Marvel, but, it, but I guess I owned um, Batman as well, but yeah, Spider-Man. Like that was, okay. that was, that was my passion for, for comic collecting. I got a huge collection of Spider-Man comics still do. Now, when you did it, because I don't know, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's very similar, but like when, like when I was a kid, I had, I, I never, I didn't read comic books as a kid. I just, I, you know, you know when, I, when I was a kid, I feel like we're about the same age. Um, I had like, you know, like we had like Superman movies and then Batman started coming out and stuff like that. So we had cartoons, but like to see them on the big screen, there wasn't like, obviously like it is now where it's like no. every couple months, there's a huge blockbuster of some kind of superhero coming out. But my thing was uh, like, uh, like toys. 
Like I had all the Star Wars toys and uh, like GI Joes. And, but as a kid, you don't get a toy and be like, oh, let me keep this in the plastic. And then 20 years from now, it's gonna be worth money. So I know comic books are very similar where if you have like a comic book that is in mint, like so in mint condition, you could probably sell it or maybe you would never want to sell it, but you know what I mean? Just to know how much it's worth versus like a comic book that you read through and whatnot. So I guess that's my question is, do you, did, do you have them that like you saved and didn't open or did you just read them all and you just kept them because they meant something to you? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, growing up, um, I definitely read them. Uh, okay. Like I was really into the stories. And okay. I love the characters, Peter Parker. And uh, I love the stories and I love the characters. As I started getting older, like being, being a teenager, I was definitely much more like conscious of the value of them. Uh-huh. Even when I remember buying them being like, okay, I'm going to buy it and make sure I have a cardboard backer and I have the protective bag and I keep them okay. like, like really, really safe. And so um, I even went. And so to, to nerd out a little bit more here, <laughs> uh, I was really into star Wars and um, yeah. star Wars characters. And so okay. uh, I was really into um, um, buying star Wars characters. So I, those are ones I was never into playing with those. I was a, I was a collector at that stage. Ah, darn it! So so I, I had <laughs> so those ones. So those ones I do have all in the packaging. Ah. Those, those I've never touched, and so those are those are in a box. Just uh, you had better. I don't know if they're appreciating or not, but but they're there. I, I just remember uh, I, th- I told the story on one of my old my personal uh, podcast, but like. I had all of them. I mean, I had like the whole collection of Star Wars talking. I'm talking like Greedo and Emperor Palpatine, which was like a a very special. Do you have, do you have that one? Palpatine? Um, Well, I know there's a whole bunch of different ones. There's variations where one has like a belt buckle and like some of the different kind of variations of those. So I remember, I mean, I had to, I had to have been like four or five, but like whenever, whenever Return of the Jedi came out, but my mom had to like, you had to get like three toys and have like the proof of purchase. And then you sent it in to get the palpit. It was like a, like a gift almost. And I had it, but you know, silly me, like I was, like I said, five or whatever. Um, I played with it. And if I would have kept it in the thing, like, I don't know, I could have had a car or something. And instead, (laughs) instead, um, but like, this had to be, let's see, we're 2009. So probably like 2009, 2010, I was like, you know, struggling artists, like so many of us are sometimes. And I, I, I went to take all my Star Wars toys because I needed money. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get like, you know, hundreds of dollars. I made like $75, <laughs> but like I needed it so bad that I was like, well, okay. You know, and now I'm like, man, but they, I mean, they were all, I didn't have any of them in the, in the package anymore. Like yep. they were all open and played with, but like looking back, I'm like for 75 bucks, I should have just kept them, you know, and I don't know, donated, know. donated plasma or something instead. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't have any that, uh, that were that old. Like those are, those are ones definitely that have a lot more yeah. value. The ones that I have would be like one, I don't know, generation after. So, okay. So like, um, like the but, prequel series. Yeah. They would have been, they okay. were the prequel yeah, series yeah. ones. So okay. Good, but, but not as good. The ones that you had or yeah. I know, um, man. Super... I just, I, I, but I, and I remember too, like we did have uh like, my grandma, for some reason, had the notion of like, I had a Darth Vader that I played with, and then we kept one in the package. But then, silly me, Luke Skywalker cuts off Darth Vader's head in my, in my play series. So th- <laughs> and then I knew where the other Darth Vader was, so I opened that one and, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Stupid Peter. Um, so, okay, so where did this like, because uh, you know, like, like you said, all of your, your companies are, you know, health related, fitness related. So... Has that something that was like you grew up with, like into like health and fitness, or was it something as you got older that you got into? Yeah, uh, great question. As I got older, um, being uh, growing up, uh, it wasn't something that was that was really top of mind. I was always someone okay. who was active growing up and playing sports, uh, but was never hockey. really uh, no Play soccer, hockey. playing oh, okay. soccer, soccer, basketball. Okay, um, I, I just it, assumed because you're Canadian. Sure. Yeah, I really, really like basketball. Um, And uh, so uh, as we get a teenager, uh, I definitely got into working out just for the sake of, you know, building muscle and like looking great and all of that. And um, but then as I like as I graduated high school and got to college and uh, I really started to care more about health, like health, health, about being healthy and eating well and um, that's just only kind of progressed more and more as I've gotten older. And now, now a place of 
um, being so involved in this being my life, um, studying in terms of understanding different kinds of ingredients and products and different kinds of workouts and um, really trying to kind of put that all together. So it's really become a huge part of my life to a place of just 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 a huge passion going forward. But but it wasn't always like that for sure. It's only okay. been in the last kind of five to ten years. And honestly, just, just as you know, as you get older, you just you care more about your health and about you would, how you feel and how you look and etc. You would you would think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you yourself I, or just in general. I mean, no, like I mean, I no me myself, I agree one hundred percent. And I feel the same way. Like, I mean, I've always, I've always been into it. Like I tell the story, like I started, I started lifting weights when I was eight. Uh, but um, I, uh, I've always been into it. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten, even though I was already into it, as you say, like, as I've gotten older, I'm like, I have to be more aware of like certain type of workouts. Like I can't do, I can't deadlift 500 pounds anymore. Cause my back will get thrown out. But like, I eat better than I used to. I, you know, sleep better, <laughs> way better than I used to. Uh, like I actually make it a point to go to sleep now because I know that that's important. Like, um, but I know so many people that are like, you know, about my age that are like, just like, Oh, it, it is what it is. I'm just going to ride it out to the end. I'm like, I don't <laughs> understand. Like science has evolved so much. Like just even in the last, you know, five or 10 years, like, like you said, like, you know, the, this thing keep getting, keep changing. And it's like, I might be able to, I, I mean, I thought about it when I was younger and I still think I, I'm going to be a hundred barring knock on wood, any disasters, but like, I'm going to be a very functional 100 year old. Like I might, they're saying, they're saying, I mean, you know, we can't, we can always speculate, but like in like 20 or 30 years, the science, the advances, like I might be able to be like 110, 115 and like a very functional, you know, yeah. and but then I, then I talk to like my friends or people that are just like, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to smoke, you know? And I'm just like, ah, come on, man. Like what's the use of being 115 and all my friends are going to be dead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The amount of time that you have left, you run out the clock, the amount of clock that you have left is substantially less. Yeah. If, I don't you're, like not, it. if you're not actively taking care of your body yeah. and mind. Yeah. Oh, my, mine too. What kind? Yeah. What What do you do as far as like uh like mind stuff? Because I, I haven't talked about this on this on this. Yeah, show. I think uh, so. Um, where um, uh, you mentioned before, I think sleep. Like yeah. uh, to me, that's that's kind of the one that I've really put a lot of time into um, understanding my sleep better. And so, yeah. um, uh, like I know people will meditate and things like that. Like I've found for me mentally um, sleep, sleep's kind of the, sleep's kind of the cornerstone of everything that if, that if sleep is good, then I find everything else that I'm way more inclined to be active. I'm way more inclined to eat better. I'm way more inclined to do all these different things uh, if I'm foundationally getting a lot of sleep. And so mm -hmm. that's been something that I've focused on. Um, so actually a few things I've done actually for this, uh, cause I, I wrote a blog article that I'm getting ready to publish on it. So it's really top of mind. Um, one of the things I've been doing is tracking my sleep a lot better. So not like um, not like a Fitbit or a wearable, but using an app that actually tracks your breathing to understand oh, really? your quality and depth of sleep. Um, so um, that's that's been really really good. Um, even uh, monitoring how much eating before bed. Uh, I found uh -huh. that um, found that found that not eating from um, like supper time um, all the way until bed um, impacts and have a I have a substantially better quality sleep because that sleep tracker will actually track your sleep score and really give you a good handle on exactly what quality of sleep you're getting. Right. Um, even things like the amount of blue light, like before bed, uh, oh, whether it's yeah, off yeah. your phone or it's off your laptop or tablet, whatever it is, that also impacts because the biggest key that I've found, it's that like I used to worry so much about, well, I need eight hours or I need seven hours right. or I need this. And just so focused on that, like kind of like gross hour number. Of course. But when what really matters is quality. So yeah. are you getting like, you can get like, you can get five hours of super quality sleep. You can get 10 hours of garbage sleep and wake up feeling like garbage and right. honestly feeling hung over when, yeah. when really all you did was to set your body up for an awful night of sleep. So, so for mental, uh, absolutely sleep. So the, does the app, like, do you like leave it on and it like, it can hear you breathing or something kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. 
what's it called again? Um, sleep cycle. So sleep cycle. Oh yeah. I I use sleep it. cycle. Yeah. yeah. So it, you basically, it basically has a microphone and you can put it on airplane mode too, which I like. So I turn off all my devices before oh, wow. bed. That's so, great. so it works on airplane mode and it's basically just, um, getting your breathing. It can tell when you go into what stage of sleep, right. it can tell, uh, I can tell if you're um, snoring or if you're talking in your sleep, it um, records it. Um, so it's awesome. Like it shows how long you've been sleeping, but then how long you've been actually sleeping. So as you can see the numbers, how long it takes for you to fall asleep. Right. Um, it's, it's awesome. Do you have a, like a, I mean, this may be, and you don't have to answer this, but, um, I've over the last like year or so I've learned the benefits and, and I got to talk to my girl. We've been talking about this, but like of getting like one of those, uh, adjustable beds mm. because, uh, like apparently sleeping the way we've slept forever <laughs> like since the beginning of time is not the most ideal way to sleep that you're supposed to be uh like kind of like a hospital bed style like there's like a v-shape where your your legs are slightly elevated and then your upper body is slightly elevated like you know what, what what's the what's the like the tempur like those kind of beds that yeah. are just supposedly but I, i've done the research and it seems to be that that's actually better for you to fall asleep faster to get better sleep. And I'm just like, man, am I so old now that I'm considering <laughs> getting a bed like this? Like, but it, but like you said, like sleep is so important. Like I, you know, when I started doing stand up, I, I was, you know, it was, I've never done drugs. Um, and it was like my drug. Like if I did a show, I mean, kind of like similar to the feeling you get like after a great workout, like there's endorphins, whatever. Like, so when I started doing stand up. I would leave and I could not go back. I could not go to sleep mm -hmm. because I just had this rush of adrenaline and whatever. And it, and, but I was also still working and I would have to get up super early. So like I was going, I went through like a period of like a few years where I was not sleeping and it was starting to like, as I got older to affect me. And then I started figuring out, okay, I need to sleep more because this is not good. <laughs> um, right. And then when I started, like, like you said, like paying attention to it, you know, making sure that I got enough. And, and like you said too, I, I, and I like that is, it's not just the, the amount, but it's the quality. So mm -hmm. like, I, I actually still use um, my Fitbit and I don't know how accurate it is, but like it, it, it does kind of give you something similar where you see like your REMs and your this and your that, and it'll give you a score at the end of, you know, each night. And like, it was weird because like, you're supposed to try to gain for like 80 or higher and, you know, that usually goes within like six to seven hours, give or take. But like, I thought this, this is weird. Like, uh, actually I had, a, I had a show the other day and then I had to be up early. So I got less than four hours of sleep. So it was like, my score was like 68, which I was like, that's kind of high for only getting four hours sleep. But I guess the second I went to sleep, I got it. And then the next day I got nine hours of sleep because my body crashed. Um, but my score was only 80. So I got five more hours, more than five hours more sleep but I only had 12 more points on the sleep scale. So I probably didn't sleep as great as I thought I did. So, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, quality, hundred percent quality over the quantity. The quantity is great, I guess, if you can get it, but there's, there's definitely kind of trade-offs yeah. to sleeping too much. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. really looking at your own quality of sleep can really make a difference on kind of everything else that you're doing. Yeah, I like that. I, I mean, and, and I think too, like you were talking about, like at the beginning, when we we're talking about, you know, how all of your, all of your companies are health related um fitness related and it's important now because obviously we're in you know i hate to say the word but we're in a pandemic uh in a, in a situation where you know people you know unfortunately I, everyone's affected but like we've learned that people that are not as healthy are affected a little bit more you know and one of the things that i've i've been telling people just on my personal is just like I mean, obviously eat right exercise, but also sleep. Like it's so important. It, it, it's one of the things that can help improve your immune system is that is if you're well rested and people don't talk about that, which is really strange. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. So oh, speaking of which, uh, since we already talked about it, um, I mean, you have, you know, 12 businesses you're running, <laughs> uh, but um, so you probably don't have a lot of time, but like people like me, that were forced inside for uh, my question to you is what did you find yourself watching during like lockdown or were you just like, Oh, I still have businesses to run. I don't have time to watch anything. 
<laughs> yeah, that's always uh, uh, that's always fun. Um, so uh, I, I definitely went through a phase where I was just uh, I have a very very addictive personality when it comes to watching <laughs> something on TV, whether it's shows or movies. Uh -huh. um, what I really got into actually during during lockdown um, was uh, the Mandalorian. Um, oh so, yeah, uh, I really like I I pushed it off for a while going. Me too. Yeah. I, I love the Star Wars movies so much. And like, yeah. those are just so great and so perfect uh, to put it into a show or to like, I'm like, ah, I don't know. And but finally I watched um, my son, um, stepson, he was um, talking about it and talking about it. And I'm going, okay, okay, I'll give it a try. And then it turned into being like our Friday night thing where we went and watched it. And uh, yeah. so good. Like that, that one, that one, they really, really did a great job with that. Yeah, they really did. I, I'm the same, like, for me, I mean, same thing. Like, I grew up with Star Wars, and they always will have a special place in my heart because um, I, I just remember going, like, to see, like, I wasn't, I wasn't alive when, Star, when A New Hope, Star Wars, came out, but I was alive for Empire and Return of the Jedi. And I, I remember going to the movies, like, uh, I don't know, have you ever been to the Chinese theater in Hollywood. The uh, we actually went, oh um, yeah, cool um, story actually. Just uh, um, so, so with Performa, because we did licensed bottles for That's Lucas. That's right. Yes. We ended up getting an invite That's to, right. uh, yeah, The Last Jet, uh, yeah. what am I thinking, Last the Jedi? Skywalker, no. Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we ended That's up getting right. an invite to that. And so we went to, it was across the street, the, um, the El Capitan. The Capitan, yes. The Capitan, yes. the Capitan Theater. Okay. And that was, so, so for the premiere and that was, that was spectacular, yeah. but um, it's so much fun and getting to see it with just a whole, like a whole theater full of people crazy about Star Wars. And this is what I was um, talking about the other day too. Yeah. Just, I, mi I, I miss that as well is, you know, there's so many things that I miss that we can't do right now, but being in a packed movie theater, like you said, with people that are so excited to see this new film, um, and experiencing all that together with, you know, the laughs and the cheering and all those things that go along with the act. I miss that so much. Um, but I remember like, so the Chinese theater is right across the street, classic. You got the handprint. It's a classic Hollywood monument, yeah. like iconic monument. It's haunted, allegedly. Um, <laughs> I've, I've never experienced the ghost there, but supposedly it's haunted. Um, and I just remember my mom taking me there because that was like one of I mean, there was like, you know, it's not like today where there's movie theaters everywhere. Like back when I was a kid, like that was like where you went to see a new movie, you know, and you waited in line, you know, three hours or four. We couldn't just pick your seats online and then show up, you know, right. 10 minutes, you know. Um, and so like I always have those memories of Star Wars. And then when they when I found out they were coming out with The Mandalorian, it was like, I don't we just want like another like they're, they're pulling on my heartstrings. Like I know what they're trying to do. I'm not going to watch it. I'm just going to watch the movies and that's it. And then people kept, like you said, people kept talking about it. So I'm like, okay. And I watched the first episode and I was like, God damn it. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. little, little Grogu or whatever his name. I love mean, Grogu. I mean, yeah. who, who doesn't love Grogu? Like, come yeah. on. And, but it, like you said, it was so well done. And I, I just thought it was fascinating how they were able to, you know, create, I mean, it's the same there, there's familiarity to it. So we like that, you know, we're like, oh, there's, they're on Tatooine or they're here. And like, there's a, you know, a starship or like all these things that, we, but it's also a whole new thing of like, there's no Jedis um, for a while. <laughs> and spoiler. Uh, yeah. I know, spoil, I know. Uh, I try, I, I try to be really good about not spoiling things. Uh, even though people online are not as, you know, like friendly about those things. But it was just like this whole thing. And I'm like, wow, this is a whole thing without characters that we like. It's, there's no Skywalkers here. There's no this. But it's still awesome, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I agree. I, I, I loved it. And I love, I watched. Uh, I, I can't watch it, like, in real time. So I wait until the last episode's on. Mm. And then I just go crazy and binge. Like you said, I, I, I'll binge watch it. So, okay, so Mandalorian, is there anything else that you watched while we were locked um, up? Yeah, I watched, being a basketball fan, uh, I watched On the Last Dance as well. Um, oh, Michael Jordan. Of course. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love that. So, yeah, with binge watching, I find that, like, it suits my personality to have series that only come out once a week mm. or else 
I'll stay up way too late watching it when I have right. to get up early. And so uh, I really appreciate like, I love it or hate it. Like Disney plus doing that with their, with their yeah. series and having it like that. I love that. Like, like with WandaVision and like having it like that. Right. Yeah. See, and see, I haven't, nicer. I haven't, I haven't uh, started that coming. I'm, oh, I'm just going yeah. to wait. I'm just going to wait until they're done. Um, so the last dance is interesting because uh, I don't, do you know who Tim Grover is Mark? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay. Uh, I love his book, uh, <laughs> Relentless. It's one of the best books ever. Yeah. Absolutely love that book. Spectacular I've, book. I've read it. Actually, it's right there. I don't know yeah. if you can see. It's Spectacular right book. Uh, I, okay. So I read that like right when it came out. Cause you know, being from LA, I'm, I mean, I grew up, we all grew up Michael Jordan fans. Like if you didn't like Michael Jordan, you were either not a sports fan or you were a Knicks fan. Like that's the, like every, right? Like, cause everyone else had to love Michael Jordan. Like we had yeah. the shoes, we had the, and, but I was also obviously being from LA, a Kobe fan. Right. So reading Relentless, I was like, and being someone that's into fitness, I actually got the book thinking like it was going to show me how to work out like they did. And then, you know, skimming, I'm like, this book isn't about working out at all. No. But like, but like a lot of those stories from the last dance were like, I already had read about yes. them in relentless and then just to kind of see it play out you're like oh yeah like i know exactly like it was, it was it's almost like uh like when you read a book like you know like hunger games or whatever like you read the book and then you see the movie even though you know what's going to happen you still want to see it play out yeah. uh but it was cool that they because i don't i didn't i don't think any of us knew that they followed that team around the last season like and they had this you know actual footage of like the stuff in real time i didn't I don't think that they ever, I mean, maybe they, I don't know why they held on to it for so long, but it, it like, it's almost like it came out at the perfect time Yeah. They and they released it. Remember they released it early. Uh, oh, and you guys didn't get to see it. Did you like in real time? No, I think it, it was um, metered out. Yeah, that's right. So they had, they had ours. I want to say it was supposed to come out in July in the U S and then they ended up being like, okay, well, everyone's stuck at home. Like, there's no sports on right now and they pushed it up. I, I yeah. feel like they, they put it out in April or something. Well, maybe that's what it was. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, and it was just, uh, I, I mean, like I said, like I loved it and it was just like cool to kind of see all that stuff play out. And uh, I love Tim. Like he's, I'm like, I, I've been talking. So for me, one of the things that I got in that I would never get into like ever but because we were locked up and not doing anything i i fell down like a cult documentary rabbit hole <laughs> okay like i started watching all the cult documentaries scientology um wild wild country i still don't even i still forget what that one was called like the cult i watched the one about nexium and heavens like anyway and i'm like and you know, i'm watching these documentaries i don't know if you've seen any of them but yeah. every time i watch i'm like these people are so dumb for falling for this right like they're so dumb but then i'm like if Tim started one, I'm in. It's like, <laughs> yeah, for anyone who hasn't uh, heard of that book or read that book, um, uh, he's uh, so Tim Grover's an elite kind of athletic trainer, and yeah. uh, he's the one who trained Michael Jordan. He trained Kobe Bryant, um, yeah. Dwayne Wade, and amongst yeah. other athletes. And right. he's just uh, just just an elite level athlete. So yeah, same thing. When I read it, I'm like, I like basketball. Uh, this seems like a good book. And when you read right. it, it's not about basketball. No. It's about mindset, and it's Correct. about uh, a determination and just, just never quitting and, uh, yeah. like motivation and personal development. And so it's just such a, such a book to drive you forward to win. And to, yeah. yeah, it's just the funny thing too, is like Tim, I, I, cause I've, I've met Tim. I, I've had, you know, conference calls with him and whatnot. Uh, he probably, he doesn't, he's not like super outgoing, and so like, I, I feel like his book, even though like it's motivating, like his book is he, and he even said, this is not like a motivational book. This is a reality check. This is a, like, he just, he's a straight shooter. Totally. But because of that, it's like refreshing because, you know, sometimes with like the motivational stuff, you're like, okay, this is, I get it. Like, this is rah, rah, but that's not him. It's just like, yo, like you need to make sacrifices. You need to, you know, figure out what's important. Uh, do you want to succeed at this thing? Okay, then put aside all the other stuff. Oh, you want to you want to be the best? Okay, well you got to be willing, unfortunately, sometimes to step on some people on the way up, like and yeah. they, and not and not be apologetic about it. And he, it was like, and for me, like when I read that book, I was like, oh, 
I don't, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm a likable guy sometimes, I think. Like, I, I try to get along with everybody, but like in the book, it's like, you know, you, you hear about like Michael Jordan and like Kobe Bryant, like they didn't need to be friends with everybody. They didn't need to be friends with their teammates. They just needed them to buy in to the ultimate goal, which was winning championships. Right. And then as a, as, you know, like as a business owner, as someone like myself, who's a comedian, who, you know, it's a business where there are necessary like connections and networking that's involved, but there's also a lot of it that we just do on our own, you know? Right. And it was like, oh yeah, like I don't, everyone doesn't have to like me, but we do have to be able to work together to an extent. And it's okay that like, at least for me, that I don't have a social life sometimes because I'm committed to this thing, you know? Yep. Um, so yeah, if you guys haven't read the book Relentless, read it. <laughs> it's great. Um, he's coming out with a new book too. Comes out on my birthday. It's called Winning, I believe. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited, excited for it. Yeah, I know. I'm like, just take my money, Tim. Take my money. Um, okay. Uh, I'm really bad at transitions, but uh, <laughs> if, it, if, you were, uh, if you were stuck on a desert island, Mark, for the rest of your life or until you got rescued, um, but you wouldn't know you were going to get rescued. So for all it's worth, you're on there for the rest of your life. You can bring your wife and kids too. Um, or maybe you don't want to, I don't know, but <laughs> um, what would be three movies that you had to, you, you, for some reason you got a DVD player and a TV and you have electricity for that, but that's it. You can't make, uh, give me three movies that you would want to have on your desert island with you. The only three movies you go watch for the rest of your life. Oh man. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'm counting this as one. Um, okay. A Back to the Future trilogy. Okay. I have to have Back to the Future. Absolutely love the story. Uh, number two, um, Shawshank Redemption. Oh, that's come up um, on this podcast before. Yeah, yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I didn't I do love it. that. That's my favorite. Uh, and then uh, number three, just maybe more of a fun one out there on the movie. Um, uh, what would I toss up? <laughs> um, uh, I really like the movie. Uh, um, that's my boy. Um, that's with um, Adam Sandler uh, and um, I don't know. Uh, where he... I don't know if I've seen that, Mark. Yeah, yeah. It's it, I find myself watching it. I've watched it a bunch of times. That, or I would say, even another. I'm kind of stupid. One um, Pixels, <laughs> like another Adam Sandler movie. Uh, have you seen Pixels? No. Are these like the okay, Netflix Pixels. Adam Sandler movies? No, no. Uh, pre that. So so pre Pixels. That. Um, that's my boy. It's Adam Sandler has a has a son when he's like just a kid, um, with the with his teacher, and then so so the kid grows up, and then then he kind of comes back into the kid's life, and he's kind of this like child star, but he's like really really messed up from being a child star, and so it's just this this clean squeaky son who's like this really kind of neurotic, uh, and then the dad like Adam Sandler's the dad who's this like. Uh -huh. Uh, I don't know, really um, uh, just a child star, but grown up. He's just really like weird. And anyways, really, really funny. Uh, and I've then Pixels. Yeah, Pixels. It's, uh, I love this one too. Uh, this is become a, a retro video games. So um, okay. Adam Sandler is a child like video game prodigy and then doesn't like, has, like, has a failure when he's young and then kind of gives it up. And then he like grows up and he has this dead end job and he's, He's friends with the president. Oh, the president was one of his friends when he was young. President and, of the United States? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and then there ends up being this like alien attack. And the way <laughs> to combat the aliens is through being able to play these uh, retro video games that were as like, anyways. It, Wait, it, what? Uh, it's about, <laughs> this so, is so obscure. And I've never heard of this ever. Yeah, so fun. A fun movie. A lot of people would probably not have heard of it or hate oh, it oh but... i i do remember this movie and like there's like a big pac-man yeah Pac -Man, Pac -Man okay. and centipede and yes oh and yeah. peter dinklage is in it yes and, yeah yeah and michelle yeah, monahan's character michelle monahan and okay yeah. i yeah i remember 
seeing the previews and being like, there's no way I'm watching this movie. <laughs> no, I find myself drawn to these old Adam Sandler movies that I've seen a million times, whether it's Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison oh, or classic. like, there's just, yeah. So anyway, so I really like kind of classic movies. I guess it's kind of, but, but I'm really into movies. So I like all kinds I could. Yeah. Got so the aliens, the aliens come to earth as video game characters, right? Is that kind of, yeah, they're, yeah, in a sense, they're, they're not even really coming to Earth as much as they are, uh, well, they come, but they kind of like take people from Earth and okay. they challenge Earth to like a battle and they have the battle <laughs> through these video games. And so it's oh, wow. Earth playing a video game and then and the aliens playing a video game and they play together for like, for the ownership of Earth. Hilarious. And Adam Sandler's this, this child like video game prodigy that's going and yeah, it's a fun okay. story. I, I'm gonna have to watch this. You have if, to. Yeah. And if it, it says it's an hour and forty-five minutes, so I got some road gigs coming up. And if it's not as good as you say it is, I'm gonna be really upset with you. <laughs> oh, for me, I love it. <laughs> awesome movie. Um, I I started. I I, I just noticed that uh, that Peter Dinklage is in this. So Game of Thrones is something that I've started to watch since we've been, you know, in quarantine. I guess you could say. Um, and I never watched it before. So it's good. I've never really, seen it. Uh, that's on my there? list. So oh, wow. uh, that's on my list for sure. Uh, I actually you, got uh, the Canadian equivalent of HBO Max. So yeah, we'll... Um, What's it called there? Um, it's called Crave. Oh, interesting. Uh, so there's just a, uh, it's a different company, but a different company, like Crave, uh, uh -huh. which is owned by Bell, it basically has all the licensing rights to Warner Brothers. Got so it. they, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting how uh, like... There's like, like you guys have different URLs and like uh, like the the domains like it's all like CA in Canada, but then like there's certain like I remember like uh, and I I don't even know if it's still a thing, but like our Instagram you could put music, but like I think for a while you guys up there couldn't do it, and it's so weird how that's so different. So licensing, so yeah, yeah it's all of just just the same way that Crave has Crave has the licensing rights for for Warner Brothers content. Just all, just all with licensing, and we deal with that all the time on Performa. Right. Oh so yeah, always, I bet. The, always the different licenses we can have. We can have this product, um, this superhero we can have for sale in this country, but we can't sell this superhero in this country. And yeah. there's just different, different licensing rights all over the place. That's that's got to be weird, and tough as a like a business person. Well, yeah, we'd be getting we getting um, whether it's whether yeah from from an Asia. They would want to sell. Oh, oh, we want to sell. We want to sell Deadpool, and we go. Oh, actually, you can't. You actually can't have Deadpool, but you could have this, and you could have that. And, wow. And uh, yeah, so it's um. Is it so? Yeah, it, do you it's think fun. there's like a like a black market for like some of these products that technically there's no licensing for? Like if I'm in, I don't know, Beijing, I could go on the dark web and find like some shaker cup that I can't find if I was actually going to a store there. Are you allowed to know. say? Blink uh, twice. I would. Uh, uh, <laughs> when it comes to the on um, the products that we had in um, Asia, like I know we had to make them a little bit different. So huh. so we put like a collector's box around them. We did different things to make oh. them stand out. Okay. Um, because yeah, there's there's counterfeit everywhere. Um, right. But just yeah, certain places will have will have more interesting more counterfeit products. Um, do you have like a and you don't have to answer this either, but I just always like to answer this because it's a fun question for me. Uh, do you and your wife have hall passes? Like, where like, if, if you met certain celebrities? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Okay, not fair enough. Best. No, you're such, a, you're such a good guy, Mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have, okay, so, okay, but okay. So similar, but not, uh, do you have like a celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. Um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> Sounds like Mark's wife's in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife's amazing. Yeah, of course, of course, I get it. Uh, no, I was just uh, I was talking to uh, one of, and it it's weird because like, as someone that's from LA, I feel like when people make like those packs. You know, like with their like, oh, yeah, have you ever met, you know, Ryan Reynolds? Like, you got a shot. Like, go ahead. Like, whatever. Um, but like with me, like in L.A., I actually I mean, and 
not that I wouldn't ever, but we had this conversation. So like my girlfriend, for example, if she gets a chance with Kevin Durant, I'm like, you know what, man, go ahead, go ahead, hook up with Kevin Durant. And for me, I had five people on my list. <laughs> they're all like, <laughs> like they're all, they're all vying for the top spot, but because I live in LA, I've met four of the people on my lists. <laughs> and so like, I think like when, when regular people like make that like, oh yeah, like, I don't think it applies to people like in LA because we come across these people at, you know, at Target or at like wherever, like it's just our daily lives. We always run into people and it's just weird. I mean, Toronto, you probably get it to an extent, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that gets shot in Toronto sure. and whatnot. And, you know, you guys have your own like, you know, networks and whatnot. So like, it's a, it's a possibility. Same thing yeah. with like Vancouver and whatnot. Like they shoot a bunch of stuff, all the, you know, all my favorite superhero shows, I feel like right. are shot in Vancouver. Uh, so, all right. You're going to get out of that one, Mark. I'll let you slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me more about your, uh, like your, your vitamins, uh, uh, Vitamart and stuff like that. Like, and then you, I know you, the, the other company that you, so Vitamart is an online retailer. Yes. Yes. Correct. But then you also have a brand that you're coming out with or that is it's out now. Yeah, it's uh, I just actually j just arrived in the warehouse, not even I mean, for sale yet on the site. So that's a, okay. that's a brand, brand new site. And that's what I found. And, and so this is uh, uh, obviously there's a lot of products out there. There's just tons and tons of supplements. Right. Um, what we found is that um, owning so owning Vitamart and running Vitamart, we carry we carry thousands and thousands of products. And from that, um, we really have that kind of cross section of getting to see well, what do people actually use? What do they love? And what's that like? It's getting that kind of behind the scenes of like, if you could look kind of behind the scenes of Amazon to understand what actually is selling and what do people love? And you really would have a great idea uh, uh, of what the, what the best versions of things you could come out with. And so that's right. kind of where we came with the brand Best Vitamin was okay. we're able to see and talk with all of our customers and get, get that cross section of uh, honestly, hundreds of thousands of customers to go, what is actually the best version of, um, I don't know, zinc or um, vitamin C or collagen or whatever it is, right. but how does that look and what is that like? And so, so from that, we then went to all these companies that make all these best versions and partnered with them. And so the whole lineup they have coming up with best vitamin is kind uh -huh. of a compilation of the best of the best. So, so okay. the name best vitamin really comes from us looking at what are all the best versions of all these different products out there, whether you're looking for some kind of um, helping some kind of like health issue they have or preventing a health issue or looking great or feeling great, whatever it is. So uh, again, it's just getting going, um, but that's the premise for someone looking for the, like the best results and the therapeutic benefit from a product. Okay. So what is the most popular type of product that you guys sell? My, yeah, can, right. I, can, I, can I guess? Sure, guess. I'm going to guess that the number one product is a weight loss product. That's, a, that's an excellent guess. Um, so uh, believe it or not, um, overall, um, uh, I would say, uh, and again, to, there's so many different products. It, to look at it from a category standpoint, uh -huh. uh, it's magnesium. Really? Magnesium. So um, uh, magnesium is such a... Uh, uh, say foundational ingredient for, for uh -huh. everyone, everyone, like majority of people are deficient in magnesium. Yeah. Uh, and so many, uh, especially if you're active, like yourself, yeah. um, you're deficient in magnesium. Magnesium is, is so crucial for so many functions in the body, whether it's your nervous system or your brain, uh, your heart. Um, it's good for so many different things. And so when you talk about uh, falling asleep, um, that's a great one. Um, even, even taking magnesium before you go to sleep can help you kind of get to a more restful sleep and better quality sleep. Uh, it's good for so many different things and so many companies now make it. And it's just such a huge, huge category, magnesium. Everyone should be taking magnesium. magnesium. I'm going to be honest, Mark. I don't think I take magnesium unless mm -hmm. it's in some, unless it's something, uh, unless it's in something that I do take, I don't specifically take magnesium. Yeah. And yeah, magnesium, Typically, people take magnesium bisglycinate. It's like a special kind of magnesium oh, or magnesium citrate. Uh -huh. um, but but magnesium is a um, absolutely foundational um, supplement for a lot That's of people. Right. Everyone everyone's different, uh, but in my opinion, it's something that a lot a lot of people can get benefit from.
So am I going to die? No, but you will, uh, <laughs> you might sleep better with having magnesium. Uh, trust me, dude, I sleep. Don't worry. I, I, talk to, I, I, I get, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll take your advice, Mark. I'm going to start taking magnesium now. Um, okay. I, I, I would have guessed like, like, I guess weight loss something, you know, cause that's like, I feel like that's like, I feel like so many people are into that. I would also would have guessed like, like a pre-workout of some sorts. I feel like yeah. those are very popular. I don't know. Well, I think maybe I'm I just a head. No, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to supplements, like, um, we, we focus more on, um, I don't want to say foundational health, but, but a lot of times when you get like weight loss products and there are ones that are, that, that are effective, uh, a lot right. of times it's not the, uh, it's not going to foundationally um, get you the long-term results you're looking for. Like a lot of these for products sure. you could take, whether you want to kind of see something, but then to really look at the long-term foundational results, um, that's kind of more where we would focus on. So looking at things like okay. magnesium and vitamin D and ensuring yeah. Uh, ensuring you have all your vitamins and minerals with vitamin C and uh, all like of that kind I of bet, different. I bet zinc, I, yep. zinc sales right now, right? Because of it's actually part of the treatment that they give people that get this, this virus that's going around. I know zinc is a very popular one, yep. not only for preventative purposes, but also like if you get it, zinc is one of the things that they give you. Um, yep. um, wow. Yeah. Um, also, uh, whatchamacallit, like, uh, Vitamin D is very, you know, kind of gotten more popular because it helps as well. Uh, Absolutely. What else? Uh, I I take I take B twelve because it enhances my mood. <laughs> yep. No, B twelve is fantastic too, and that's um, uh, uh, I see a naturopath who goes and kind of looks at my blood panel and looks at like my genetics and all that stuff. I does like a blood testing. What's it blood called? Panel. What's, what's, what's the thing called though? You said, Oh, a naturopath, a naturopath. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Do you not have a natural? Okay. So uh, uh, <laughs> it'd be a like natu a natural, uh, it'd be a natural like doctor. So that okay. there'd be like, there'd be like a, like a medical doctor. Right. Then there'd be like a natural doctor. So like naturopathic doctor, like ND. Uh, so uh -huh. what would you call someone who, um, isn't like, didn't go to medical school, yeah, but went I get like, it. Uh, so thing. I think uh, maybe it's just uh, a U.S. versus Canada thing, um, but I think uh, we call that like a holistic person. Yeah. Okay. Holistic. Yeah, same thing. I think that's very yeah. popular in these parts, like holistic. Yeah, okay. Holistic medicine, kind of like. Right. So this thing. would be yeah. So this would be that same kind of person. So I would go see yeah. that kind of person. Got I it. would give them. Like, I would get. I would get blood test. I would do genetic testing, uh, uh, and I'd give them all the information. They uh -huh. then go and analyze it all. And then based on that, they would go and say, okay, well, based on, based on your current health and based on your health goals or whatever it is, that's what you want. So actually B12, and that's why I kind of brought this up, is oh. B12 was something that she had recommended for me and actually yeah. do um, injectable B12. Oh so yeah, so it's very popular here. Yeah. Especially in LA, people get B12 shots. Oh really? All okay. The time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a thing. Uh, I just, I take it as in supplement form because it, it, it and part of it was too, because I noticed that like, uh, I used to drink, used to uh, drink like a lot of energy drinks, yep. you know, like Rockstar or whatever, like all those things. And I noticed that one of the common ingredients in all those was B12. And I'm like, is it the caffeine that's making me feel good? Or is it more of the B12? And then I started taking B12. I'm like, oh, it was actually, I mean, caffeine obviously helps, obviously, but it's B12. It's very important. Like, and people are like low on energy and whatever. That's when they go get the B12 shot. So there yeah. is a very, I don't, I'm not a scientist or a whatever, but like, I do know there's something about the B12 that just boosts, maybe it's your energy or whatever, but I make, I feel better when I take yeah. it. I would agree. I feel okay. the same thing. It's one of the reasons that I take it too. Like it's good overall for your body. And there's a bunch of different reasons for it, but it also, also does kind of give you an energy boost to make you feel better. Got it. Um, what, uh, is there something that I can take that would just, I'm not going to do anything about it, but is there something that you have that I could take that would make me more desirable to women <laughs> or men for that matter? Like just make people be more attracted to me. To you. To specifically me. Yes. So specifically <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> that is a great question. I'd have to think about that one too. Okay. Darn it. Um, I'm trying with like a, you know, I take like a, 
like I said, vitamin D, vitamin E for my skin, you know, like stuff like that, I feel like helps. Uh, but I was just hoping that you give me like an inside, you know. You take collagen? Do you take collagen? I, I do. And I have a joke, but I'm not going to say it on the podcast because there may be children listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, collagen's a but, good one. So. Yeah, I do. T- I do take collagen. I take, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, and I'm sure there's other brands too, but this specific brand, there's no like, uh, there's calories, but it's very, uh, the vital protein version of collagen. Yeah. yeah uh, and, popular. and, and coincidentally, I discovered that by going to one of the fitness expos, like a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's flavorless. So I can mix it with anything. Like I said, I know, uh, there's probably other companies, but they seem to have been like the first one. They were I, really one of the leaders in yeah, the collagen that yeah. I knew of. And, uh, it's weird because like, you know, in LA, you hear collagen and you think about like people's like body parts, like, oh, she's got collagen lips or whatever. And I guess there's a reason for that. But like, yeah, like collagen is something that I take. And I do find that it has, I mean, I don't know. I'm lucky enough to not look my age, I guess I can say. Um, and, uh, but I feel, I've felt like since I started taking collagen, more so I've been able to kind of preserve myself a little bit because it's supposed to be good like for for wrinkles for your skin for your hair for your nails like all those things like for your joints it's good for yeah like yeah like preventing osteoarthritis or helping it and yeah there's so many benefits to collagen okay give me another one um (laughs) what's another one yeah uh, I know it's a good question magnesium vitamin d um uh, like a b complex like uh-huh. you mentioned you mentioned b12 yeah uh, having like the b complex just b vitamins in general right um b complex and so that you're getting your whole range of all your different b vitamins um that one is really really important and that's um, from call you can get that from collagen no that's a separate product oh okay separate I got it, product. Got it, got it. Okay. um uh and then um like healthy oils so like i take like i take oh. cod liver oil but you could take like a fish oil or anything right. like that okay. Uh, I take cod liver because it has vitamin A in it as well. Uh-huh. You get you get vitamin A, but but that um, that omega, like you get that omega, you want that right. healthy uh, yeah. healthy oils. That's a that's yes. a really really key one and, too. And you, and you can you can you can get them from some foods, but if people are like trying, like sometimes the oils are high in calorie, so it's better to get it in a supplement form. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think part of it too is just um, uh, from a. Uh, uh, being, being able to take it consistently, mm-hmm. but having, having a supplement form makes sense. You can definitely get yeah. it through, through fish. And there's, there's so many benefits to having right. the actual food source is ideal, of course. Um, but you're just not, you're not having it every day. So right. being able to have that every day consistently mm-hmm. is best through supplement form. So how many vitamins do you take per day? Yeah, like I was counting actually the other day. Yeah. I was <laughs> counting the actual pills. I'm like, man, I take a lot of pills. So, um, I went through a, like, went through a stretch where I wanted everything in powder because I wanted to put everything into a smoothie and then right. have it all on one because I don't want to take right. pills. Uh-huh. But then I started doing for the last, I don't know, uh, almost a year now, I guess, intermittent fasting. So then I don't really have a lot of smoothies because I'm not in the, uh, uh, I'm not in the house when I'm eating really. I'm right. typically uh, for most of the time. And so I started kind of switching everything back over the pill. So, so I think there's like, uh, 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 uh it, it depends like day to day, depending what I'm taking, but maybe around 30 to 35 pills a day. <laughs> on there. Oh. I thought I took a lot. I take 10, yeah. 10 yeah. pills, <laughs> but I like to swallow them all at once. It's like a challenge. Oh, I don't do stuff. that. No, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> but I was, what, what I was going to say, um, we need a bigger pill container from Performa mm. to get all those vitamins in because 10 is a lot. 30, you cannot like, that's, that's almost the whole bottle. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Uh, uh, that's in two divided doses. Like I'm taking, I'm taking them when I wake up and I'm taking right. them before I go to bed. That's still a lot of pills, man. That's a lot. What, uh, <laughs> how many can you swallow at once? Yeah. I usually, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll usually take maybe anywhere from three to five, depending okay. on the size, but maybe I'm a lightweight compared it's to hard. Some people, yeah. I, I, it took me a while. Like, I remember I used to take, there was, there was one, uh, the most I think I've done at one time is 15. And that was like, I don't think I'm going to try that again, but 10 is like, I do on the regular, like, just like, bam. It's just like, so what, I don't know. So what do you do when you get one caught in there? Cause that happens, whether it's, whether it's like a, 
a, a caplet or right. like what do you do when you can uh, you can you, taste it and you can you, oh i was just gonna say you hope that it doesn't break <laughs> open because that is not fun and it happens all the time and you're like oh you just have this nasty like kind of residual like burping for like a couple hours and stuff and you just you're just my answer to every everything and uh is just always i look in the mirror and i'm like all right it's worth it <laughs> you justify it though. yeah that's it comforts, like yeah. everything is just like you know like it's just you know like i don't i don't i actually like waking up in the morning and working out first thing when i can you know like sometimes it's not an option because i got to be somewhere but like if i can i'm working out early because then it's just over with and it's like, yeah, is it pleasant to wake up at five or whatever? No, but then it's like, is it pleasant to eat a salad instead of going to here? No, but like all these different things. But it's like, at the end of the day, I feel great. I mean, I feel, I feel amazing. I don't feel my age at all, but I also look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, man, it's worth it. You know, that's just me. 100%. Part, yeah. it's, so it's, it's, it's partial conceit. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly conceited. And I'm okay with that because, you know, I got this is my money maker. You know, I have to send headshots to people, and you know, like I gotta hope that they call me into the audition room because I look a certain way. So like, I this is part of my business, you know. So well, yeah, you truly only get one place to live, and that's so it. you might as well you might as well take care of that place. Uh, speaking of which, uh, this is unrelated, but we were talking about it earlier and then I wanted to get into it and then I forgot because we got, um, do you think there's aliens? Well, I just saw actually something uh, <laughs> on, um, uh, I forgot, on Apple News and I was just kind of going through and it's like, it was something, I feel like it was, uh, I feel like it was TMZ, but it was just like, like proof and like the actual spaceship and they showed it from the multiple angles and oh, this yeah. and that and just like, uh, are we alone? Probably no. I, I don't think so. Um, yeah. But but I just like it's just yeah, it's constantly <laughs> around us. I feel because the point that that, that what was leading what we we're just talking about and what made me remember this is because um, I, I do think that also we are not alone. Um, but I think that and just from what I've kind of observed from watching multiple documentaries and listening to podcasts about like is that the the aliens don't travel in the way that we know travel do you know what i mean so like it's not like they're flying millions of miles from some planet out there and then they end up point b right like theirs is more like interdimensional kind of travel which we can't fathom unless you're like nerds like us that watch you know star wars and stuff like that like we're like oh yeah or like you know watching the flash where there's like multiple uh multiple earths and whatever there's like earth you know there's like infinite numbers of earths um stuff like that and so i think that's what it is and so i think potentially if we could be around long enough <laughs> this is going off the deep end but like if we can take care of our health long enough to witness the you know uh kind of uh admittance of there being this extraterrestrial or whatever life that the governments all know about and then from there we obviously will depart this and I'm not a Scientologist, which is I'm, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm like, I sound like a Scientologist right now uh, that like you will transport from this, this vessel, this, this, whatever, and just go to another dimension and live another life. Not like the one we know. I know we just got crazy deep on this. This is what I think it could happen. It could I mean, happen. I know. And it's just funny because <laughs> have you not watched the Scientology documentary? No, I haven't. You kind of know what science. I'm sorry if you're a Scientologist and you're listening to this. Um, I have a <laughs> very general sense, but not, yeah. so uh, not really. They do believe that after they leave here, they go off into another planet somehow. Gotcha. And this actually happened. This, this is a reoccurring theme in several cults that have, and so I'm like, we look at this, some people look at it like these people are crazy. But now that we know that there is life out there, I think from what we've been reading and whatnot, maybe they're right, <laughs> which is crazy. Well, like, I found, um, <laughs> uh, did you, um, uh, I don't know if you've read the book, uh, The Homo Sapiens. 
Um, no, but I want Homo, to. It, yeah. Homo, Homo Diaz is the other one, I think. Uh, the sequel it's on my list. It? Yeah, it's on yeah, my list. I only read the sequel, but yeah, like it, it, it talks about um, that um, the infinite galaxies and the infinite, yes. like the infinite that like there's infinite. So it's more than likely that there's something else like infinite. So right. um, yeah, but I found that interesting. I don't like, uh, uh, I don't know a lot about it. I haven't, I haven't looked <laughs> a lot into it, um, but I did find that concept very, very interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a multiverse. And yeah. it's, I think it's, I think it's a thing. And yeah. it, there's some people that think that like, that's what explains deja vu. Like when we get it, it's not so much that we've done it before. It's that there's someone else that's us in another, uh, it's just so much to unravel. We'll have to do yeah. a podcast. About <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> um, okay. Mark, uh, I think, I think we're good, man. I think, I think we got all the stuff. Um, we got all your companies on there. Uh, the, the salad's going to come out pretty soon, right? The salad delivery. Oh, salad nation. Yeah. That'll yeah. be next time I'm on the show. Yes. Um, we'll talk about salad nation. And, and when I go, you know, once I can travel up, uh, to Canada, without having to quarantine, you know, hopefully it's up and running by then. Absolutely. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I can experience the, the science and the, uh, the technology of being able to get a salad, a custom salad delivered to me. Uh, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll put, uh, we will put all the, uh, the links to, to Vitamart, to Best Vitamin and everything in the show notes for people. Uh, and you can be found do you want people to follow you on social media? Why sure. At, yeah. at Mark Holloway Chuck. Yeah. At, at Mark Holloway Chuck on Instagram. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes too. So if you guys want to check any of that or check Mark out, um, great companies all around. Mark's a good guy. Um, he doesn't want to tell us who his celebrity crush is. So that just tells you how good of a guy he is. Uh, but dude, thank you so much for, uh, for, for tuning in or for, for joining us. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything that you guys do for the company and everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can see each other in person sometime. <laughs> in look forward to it. You yeah, look uh, forward you, to it. Man. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on the Performa Podcast. Thanks so much, Peter. Appreciate it. All right, see you later, buddy. All right, see ya. Yeah.